All right, so welcome back uh, to The Hill on this 4th of July, continuing to talk about the state of democracy here in America. Let's talk about the way forward uh, now and, and where things stand. The denial of election results, as we know, has happened. There's been uh, discussions about access to voting, um, talks about election integrity, for example. We just had a recent ruling which was discussed about uh, making sure in states that there's essentially a checks and balance system involving the courts. Um, where do we go from here? To the panel, and, and, and Brett, I told you I would start with you on the other side of the break, so, so pick it up. Where do you think we go with here as it relates to the future of democracy in this country? Yeah, of course. You know, I think most broadly, we need to begin rebuilding trust, uh, both in our institutions and in ourselves. But, you know, that's a long-term process that, frankly, probably begins at dinner tables across the country. So I think there are a few institutional reforms that we can begin to consider uh, that will have a meaningful effect in terms of reducing the polarization that divides us. First, uh, we need to support candidates who uh, want to make voting uh, easier. Um, of course, we want our elections to be secure, but we also want uh, representatives to be responsible to voters. And that really leads to the second point. I think that we need to reduce partisan gender, uh, gerrymandering. We want voters to choose their representatives and not for representatives to choose their voters. And I think the third broad institutional reform that we should uh, really begin considering is something called ranked choice voting, which tends to uh, reward centrist candidates that appeal to the many rather than extremist candidates who appeal to the few. So I think there are a few tangible institutional reforms that we can consider uh, that would go a long way towards reducing polarization. Lindsay? Well, I really love those solutions, and I think those are, are great ideas, and I stand behind them. I would also add that I think we have to focus on, on two additional things, and, and they're both around media and information and an understanding of civics literacy. So a moment in history, I think, that is informative in this particular moment that we are in today is the 1930s, which was actually the moment when fascism was most on the rise in the United States. It was the biggest threat to our democratic institutions. And the way that FDR, President FDR, pushed back against that idea, that rising force, was by making the explicit argument that democracy is actually essential to getting things done people care about, the kitchen table issues, their daily lives. Democracy is the best way to protect and to ensure that they continue to have good lives. And I think that that information piece is missing because the government actually does get things done, or at least more things done than most Americans think, but they're not hearing about it and they're not learning it. And that's causing a lack of faith and understanding in those institutions. Richard, what about those ideas and, and any on your own? Yes. So uh, first, uh, uh, we know that primary elections are one of the major sources driving polarization and extremism. The electorates are very small. They're not representative. Uh, I'm in favor of the experiment that Alaska has adopted, which is to get rid of the party primary and have an open primary where the top four candidates go on to the general election. The general idea behind a lot of these reform efforts, including ranked choice voting, is that candidates who have the broadest electoral appeal to voters should actually be rewarded. And right now our system too often allows more factional candidates to get elected. The second thing, to build on the, the most immediate comment, um, we have found it incredibly difficult to deliver public goods of all sorts. Subway lines, airport expansion, railroad expansion, infrastructure development. And that's in part because starting in the 1970s, we introduce lots of process-oriented checks on that process. And we have come to realize that that has led to tremendous delays, cost increases, uh, projects being abandoned. This is true for development of yep. affordable housing also. We need to be able to deliver public goods much more efficiently. Yep. And we have to re-examine how we got to this point where we're so um, tied up in knots in being able to do this. You know, Bob, there's a lot of talk about what's going on in America and what we can do but there's others who are trying to have their imprint on this, and to, uh, this yeah. as well. Two actors you know that we talk about all the time, Russia yep. and China. Real quickly, they, are they succeeding at all? Uh, they are, and they, we know they meddled in the 2016 election. We know that just from a fact, whether the details of it. But yes, Russia and China love the fact that we're polarizing. But the enemy is not us. It's them, to some degree. <laughs> Certainly with Russia, and, and to some extent, China. Yep. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider.
And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.